So just how bad is the uh, COVID-19 crisis in Alberta? Well, it's bad enough that a group of unions got together and these unions represent uh, almost all the healthcare workers in, in the province. And they asked the uh, Premier, Premier Jason Kenney to ask Je Pre the Prime Minister to bring in the military to help. And I'm gonna talk to Gil McGowan, who's the president of the Alberta Federation of Labor about that. So welcome to the interview, Gil. Hi, Markham, uh, good to be here. Well, look, I, I don't think we can understate just how serious it is in Alberta. Uh, so what was it exactly that your group of unions asked of the premier? Well, first, I'll say that uh, it's not normal for us to have uh, a big summit of union leaders on, late on a Friday afternoon, but that's exactly what happened last Friday. And it was prompted uh, by an, out, you know, an outcry from our members on the front line lines of the healthcare system here in Alberta. Um, so I convened the meeting. We had uh, Heather Smith from the president of the United Nurses of Alberta, Guy Smith from the Alberta Unit of Provincial Employees, uh, Mike Parker from the Health Sciences Association of Alberta, and Rory Gill from the Canadian Union of Public Employees. And collectively, they represent more than 100,000 frontline healthcare workers working in the Alberta healthcare system, basically everyone other than doctors. And so you know, the doctors in uh, ER and uh, ICUs around the province have been, uh, you know, crying out over the last couple of weeks about um, the, the crisis caused by the fourth wave. And so we wanted to find out what our own members were hearing. Um, and if anything, they were, they were telling us that it was even worse. And uh, so as we heard the stories and the reports back from each union, it became clear to us um, that, uh, you know, we, we weren't necessarily you know, just saying that the, the, the healthcare system here in Alberta is on the verge of the collapse. Um, the, the, our assessment after this meeting was that it was in, in the process of collapsing, um, you know, and, and not just in the big cities, but all across the province. And in some ways, actually, the, the, the hospitals in the uh, smaller centers in rural Alberta um, are getting hit even harder because the, I mean, the, the, the COVID infection rates um, in rural Alberta are off the charts. Um, and so, well, you know, basically we said this is a crisis situation and, um, and, and, and we simply don't have enough people. Um, and so we wrote a letter uh, to our premier, Jason Kenney, uh, asking him to um, exercise what we think is his constitutional responsibility in times of crisis, which is to call on the federal government for assistance. In particular, uh, we asked him to ask the federal government uh, for military medical units to be deployed, but also to deploy the Red Cross and organize whatever kind of staffing, medical staffing assistance that they could uh, from other provinces. Um, you know, and what we said in the letter that we sent on Saturday uh, morning uh, was basically that, um, you know, there are no more nurses in this province to deploy. There are no more paramedics. There are no more um, respiratory therapists. There are no long, no, no more support staff even, and uh, you know. So the, the the well is dry. The tank is empty. Um, you know, our members uh, who've been working on the front line for the last 19 months, uh, you know, they're telling us that uh, you know, th you know, they've been working 110 uh, percent and then some, but they're telling us that they're worried that this fourth wave uh, is it might be the one that crushes them. Now, I've been interviewing uh, some COVID-19 modelers, and they say that uh, the, uh, the fourth wave is just really getting started. They're expecting infection rates to go up, uh, which means more hospitalizations and more UC ICU utilization. So this is only going to get worse. And what we are also hearing, of course, is that uh, many, uh, not many, uh, nurses are uh, getting burned out. They're yeah. uh, leaving the system in significant numbers. We're hearing that uh, the AHS uh, can't, the Alberta Health Services, can't get doctors and nurses to cover shifts. ERs are being closed down. I, I mean, if this isn't a crisis, I don't know what is. And as you say, the, the well is, is dry. So given that the infection rate is gonna be going up, more hospitalizations, more ICU admissions, uh, if, the, if Jason Kenney says no, then what do you do next? Well, uh, that's the problem. I mean, th th there's no um, easy solution. Um, I mean, 
the solution should have been for you know over the summer of two for the government uh, not to remove all uh, our pandemic restrictions. I mean, I, I think that's and people have to remember that's how we got in this situation. Back on July first, Jason Kenney wanted to be the premier of the first province uh, to remove all COVID restrictions and re you know return the economy and the province back to normal. Um, and that was in advance of the, the Calgary Stampede, which for people outside of Alberta, that's like the big party in Southern Alberta. And it's also a big fundraising opportunity every year for conservatives at both the provincial and federal level. So Jason Kenney was desperate uh, to have his fundraisers. Um, and, uh, you know, so he threw caution to the wind, uh, basically, uh, you know, declared the province open for summer. And that set up the situation that we're in right now. You know, the, uh, the, the experts in, in epidemiology, the doctors on the front line, we in the labor movement, we warned that this was reckless and irresponsible and that would, it would set us up for a situation like the one we're experiencing right now. Um, but here we are, right? I mean, like, you know, like we, in, you know, a month or two from now, we, we will have to look back at uh, this open for summer plan, which was crazy. Everyone knew it except for apparently for Jason Kenney and the members of his caucus. So there, there will be a time for accountability, but right now we've got this mess that they've created and uh, people are dying literally as a result. Um, so we have to focus on the immediate crisis. And you know, what we need are <laughs> more beds um, because even if, even if, for example, we just lock down the whole province right now, uh, which I actually think we're in the point, the point where we need to consider that. Um, you know, some doctors are calling it the, a fire break lockdown um, you know, for, you know, up to a month or two uh, to get a handle on this. But even if we do that right now, uh, the die has been cast for hundreds and maybe that, literally thousands of more cases. Uh, these people are already infected and they'll be presenting to the hospitals in the next few weeks. Um, but our, our, as you said, our ICUs are already full um, and uh, they, we've had what the AHS calls surge beds. But um, we, we're at the limit of that too. You, you, like a, you can only, you, the beds mean nothing if you don't have people to staff them. And that's the problem. That's why we're asking the federal government to send people in, you know, whether it's the military, the Red Cross, I don't care, right? Um, but the pro, and the problem is the two neighboring provinces, BC and Saskatchewan have both, both told us they have no people to spare. And so, you know, it's gotta be the federal government. Otherwise people are gonna die, you know? Um, and, I, and I don't like, like you know, people say, well, we're at the point of, uh, you know, like we're days away from, uh, you know, implementing what the doctors call triage protocols, which means that, you know, our, our healthcare professionals, doctors and nurses are going to have to start doing like battlefield medicine where they decide uh, who lives and who dies. And I, and I want to stress this for, this is not hypothetical. Um, this is going to happen in Alberta in the next couple of days. And it's, you know, and it, like I said, the die is cast, and so it's going to happen. So we need people, and that, and that, and and that's what what we were trying to do with our letter over the weekend to the premier is basically debunk this idea that uh, we can simply add more beds to deal with increasing cases, and uh, there just aren't any people left. And that, and we represent those people, and we're saying they're all working. They're either working, they're sick, or they or they're dropping out, and that's. Uh, because of 19 months of, of, of work and especially, you know, 19 months of working 150% and then, you know, to be greeted by these anti-vaxxers protesting outside the hospitals, you know, we have a, work, a healthcare workforce that's exhausted, but also demoralized. And um, this is a crisis. So we need more people on the front lines in the short term, but in the longer term, we need to deal with transmission because it is out of control in this province. Now, Gail, final question here. Uh, we understand, I mean, we've been hearing stories about demoralized and exhausted and burnt out healthcare workers for months now. So we know, uh, you know, we've got a pretty good handle on, on that story. But I, one thing I, I'd like your opinion on is the attitude of the average Albertan, if there is such a thing, about this. Because, you know, the, uh, the anti-vaxxers are protesting but the responsible people, the vaccinated people are staying home and doing the responsible thing. They're not out because, you know, they're worried about spreading the virus. So what is that? At what point do average Albertans put enough pressure on the government and Premier Kenny to actually do something other than the weak need, you know, restrictions that were brought in midweek, which now are being revealed as, you know, ridiculous, ed editable vaccine passports and that sort of thing. So what is yeah. there a point at which the average Albertan simply isn't going to take anymore? 
Well, I think we're already at the point where the average Albertan uh, is saying enough is enough. Uh, but unfortunately, in a parliamentary system uh, such as the one that we have, uh, especially where a government has a majority, um, and especially as, as in our case here in Alberta, you've got a government with a majority that has been pandering to its narrow anti-vaxxer base and ignoring the majority. Um, because, you know, like it, it frustrates me because, you know, Alberta has this reputation for being more conservative and, and uh, you know, they think we're, you know, if you're outside, from outside of, outside of Alberta, they, you may get the impression that everyone's on board with what Jason Kenney is doing in terms of pandering to the anti-vaxxers, but that's not true. Uh, poll after poll has shown that uh, Albertans are on the same page as Canadians and other province. Um, you know, more than, you know, about 80% of Albertans support the idea of a vaccine passport. Um, you know, that's why Jason Kenney reluctantly agreed to something that looked like a, on the surface, looked like a vaccine passport, or it turns out to be uh, so riddled with exemptions uh, that it's useless. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the thing. I mean, people are, you know, here in Alberta, you know, they, the majority have lined up to get their vaccines. The majority want vaccine passports. The majority uh, agree with uh, that, that we never should have opened, you know, opened for summer as Jason Kenney did. But it's just frustration right now. Everyone, you know, wants change. They're, they're, they've made their position clear to the government, but the government is completely unresponsive. And, and even now, uh, the UCP is imploding internally. Um, there's a mutiny against Jason Kenney from his own caucus and his constituencies, uh, constituency associations. But it's not because he that Jason Kenney didn't do enough to protect Albertans. It's because he's done, they think that he's done too much. So we're in this weird situation where the vast, vast majority of Albertans, even those who voted for him, are, regret that they did and they they want more public uh, pandemic protections. But this, but the the tail is wagging the dog, and all these anti-vaxxers have disproportionate influence on this government. It's just, it's you know, it's it's just we have the worst possible government at this time to deal with a pandemic. It's, it's like it's it's democratic negligence. It's government negligence causing death. That's what's happening here in this province. It's a dire situation, uh, Gil. We wish you all the best, and uh, let's hope that um, you know the worst case scenario doesn't unfold because that's going to mean uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of new infections per day, with inevitably leading to deaths. And we have at Energy Media, we have uh, many friends, readers, and and family even in Alberta. So we wish you all the best. Okay, thanks, Markham.